morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 300. And I have no idea this morning, actually, to be totally honest, 74, yes, of the Daily Beaver, 73 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yay! Today, recording day is Thursday. Yeah, of course it would be four or three. It's a Thursday. Thursdays are always at three in the second week. It is Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a nice day here at the Beaver Lodge. From what I can see, there seems to be some nice bright light uh, above the rooftop when I'm looking outside. So it looks like the sun is making a bit of an effort today. So um, I'm your host. The Eager Beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me as always is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a quick nibble for you this morning, but before we do anything else, let's uh, let's ask Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir, as I slow down a bit so he can swallow that last little bit because he's having a little bit of a munch. And talking with your mouth full is very impolite. Yes. Even though right. sometimes I do it when I have cereal in my mouth. Mm. So uh, <laughs> mental health, um, I'm, I'm uh, uh, had a bit of a setback, but um, I'll bounce back quickly, very quickly. Um, it's just minor, and it's not even earth-shattering. Uh, it's just something that has occurred, and a um, little anxiety over it, but. I mean, it's not in the grand scheme of things. It's it's literally nothing. It's just there's going to be some changes that have to be made, um, and and they will affect uh, vacation plans amongst other things. So, life goes that way sometimes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Um, things are um, really good here. Oh, that's good. Watch. Yes, yes. Um, first of all, um, there's a. I want to give a shout out to, to one of our listeners, Kit Hugh, uh, because uh, recently. Um, he started a new job. Oh, really? Yes. He's teaching for a new school board. Uh, so he's had a day one, you know, starting in a new place. Day one, those are new beginnings. Uh, so, you know, sending all positive vibes, uh, hoping that uh, the new position is everything he hopes and would love it to be, because uh, that's always very exciting. But over here also at the Beaver Lodge, uh, some important news. Um Yesterday was the first day that my beaver sweetie got to go back into the lab. Now, he's my sweetie likes to be precise, so he didn't actually go into the lab and perform experiments, but he went to the place where the lab is and talked to some people who he's going to be working with and did safety training and all that kind of stuff. But he is now, you know, uh, to a certain extent, Um, I don't know if you could say it's an employee of, because actually he got his own for funding, but he managed to fan some space in a lab at Queens University. He managed to secure a little bit of funding, and he is going to be doing some experiments. 
which is really cool. Now, the reason he was doing these experiments, yes, there were some things for his patent, but there was also some things for his paper. You know, the editors were uh, and the reviewers were looking for stuff, and he figured that maybe I'll need to do a couple more experiments to, to get that part. Well, the latest version of the manuscript that he sent in, he got uh, the return uh, from the journal, and uh, they said, just these minor revisions, please have them done in two weeks. And I'm guessing that You'll be published. these minor revisions, it's like if you do these little things, then they should be good to go, and you'll be published. Okay, this man graduated in 2020. Yeah, so in the middle of COVID, it's 2024. It's taken a long time to get this published, to get this written the right way. I mean, you know, when they say science, he discovered this thing maybe about like four years ago. And it's been stuck at this stage. And then it still has to, you know, people have to like want to put money in it and has to, you have to, you know, build a test pilot and then, you know, a test plant and try it with larger batches and, you know, see if it still works. And, you know, that costs money. Like lithium isn't cheap, <laughs> so you know. So it's like you know somebody will somebody supply the raw material. Well, you know, and it seems that these pieces are coming together for him. Uh, so all of a sudden, in the lab, perhaps about to be published, some interest from some company somewhere in wanting to do something with the patent that might be leading to him getting some material and some funding. And the patent process is still going forward in the United States. Awesome. It's at that final stage, and it's been there for a while, where lawyers try to disprove the patent, and if they can. Right. So, um, everything's coming up sweet. Well, that's awesome. That's great news. I like to hear that. So, um, some firsts for him, too, of course. Day one's right, walking back into the lab for the first time, not as a student. Right? As a mm-hmm. peer, like this with other people who have as much education or more as him thinking his idea is good enough to actually be granted last this I don't think he's he like just came back and says, Well, I didn't do any lab stuff. I don't think it's good. it's hit him yet, but in like in a couple of weeks, it's like, dude, it's like you're in your happy place and you're doing science. Yeah. I mean this like, is all good. It's like you've done science in about like three or four years. I mean, the labs just closed. Boom. Yeah. Right. When COVID happened, that was it. Boom. Whatever you, wherever you are now, boom, that's it. Like that, that's the, that's the data you got. So, um, I am so proud of him. Oh yeah. Understandably so. He's worked so hard. So file under Canadians who make us proud kids. Hell yeah. My beaver, sweetie. Right there. And I can't, and I know it's completely unethical, but I'm going to be doing it anyway because when he finally does get published, I am going to have him as a guest on the show. And yes, I know you're not supposed to interview family and friends and whatnot, but I'm going to do it anyway. He is freakishly brilliant. And uh, what he has researched and what he has discovered is really something. Well, so, we've had him on the pod, uh, on the podcast. The, yeah, the podcast. Winner. That's different. That's fun. You know, family, yeah. fun, friends. You know, but usually it's a conflict of interest, right? I mean, that's what did Chris mm. Cuomo in, right? Yeah, but we're <laughs> journalists, so who cares? <laughs> so I'm just putting all the conflicts and the biases up front. <laughs> we're not journalists. It doesn't matter. I will not be objective. No, I know you won't. But I think. But neither because, will I. You be. Know, because I know him. Yes, but because you know, in my previous work, I was doing, you know, what they call uh, in French vulgarisation or uh, popularization of science. Because you know, taking complicated science, you know, talking to scientists, finding out what they do, what not, and then explain, being able to repackage it to explain it to the average person so that they can understand what was going on. Um, objectively, I know enough to know that this is very, 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 very sexy. So it just happens to be that it's someone I'm close to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I I do think it is genuinely newsworthy on its own. But yes, 
there are supposed to be some standards and I will violate every single one of them on that day. That's fine. Okay. So there you go. Um, in the news, uh, there is... Can I start off with something thing. really good? Yes, please. Edmonton defeated LA in five games. They're moving on to round two. Yes. Uh, I wanted to watch it. I guess I, I we were I was at the we were yeah, one I minute into the up. second. I was too tired. Yeah, one minute into the second period, and I was like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm done." And it was the same thing yesterday at the Leafs game. It's like we got to overtime, and it was like I was hammering nails. <laughs> it was just, well, I made it. I so made maybe it I shouldn't watch. <laughs> That's. <laughs> yeah, I watched the Leafs game, and they, you know, their their overtime victory. I was kind of surprised. Um, I didn't think they had it in them. That being said, I mean. Boston had the advantage of them over them all season. Yeah. Boston has much better defense and a better goaltender, but they don't have much in the way of offense. They've got Marshawn and Pasternak, and that's it. Like two guys, yeah. really. I mean, that is it. So who knows? You know, who knows? And alas, the Jets. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, I was looking at the uh, at the seedings, and I'm not exactly sure how they work. In one division, it was, as I would expect, one versus eight, two against seven, right? But in the other division, the Jets were playing the Avalanche, and it was two against four in terms of the rankings. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I'm watching, I'm thinking, like, how the heck did that happen? I so, don't know. Because, I mean, it seems to change, but I, re I remember a time it was always one versus eight, two versus seven. That was it. But I guess with the new way the conferences are or something, maybe things change. Oh, yeah. the cues. She's, she's asleep on the opposite oh, no, side. Yeah. Usually she sleeps in her bed on the left. <laughs> Today she just <laughs> snuck in behind my chair and is sitting on the right here. I've never seen her do that before. But, uh, She's such a happy I puppy. <clears throat> well, I Bridget love her was, so much. Bridget stayed at her, her place last night because she was with her daughter. So I don't know, maybe she's just missing. Nah, I don't know. Mm. Yep, indeed, indeed. So, um, and uh, also uh, in uh, good sports news, a Felix Oje Aliasim, our tennis uh, player, uh, who has been uh, making his way back from injury, um, got a bit of a gift. Because every mm -hmm. now and then on your comeback, you need a bit of a gift. But he was doing very well. He's playing at a uh, Masters 1000 uh, tournament, I believe it is in Madrid. And uh, he had gotten to the uh, quarter final? No, the uh, the round of eight. And he was supposed to play Yannick Sinner, who is currently uh, ranked number one. Uh, and uh, even though Yannick Sinner won his last game, for some reason he had to withdraw. So Felix Ogialiasim got a walkover, and he's in the, the first semifinal of a thousand tournament in a while. Uh, because of his injury and that will uh, really help his ranking and uh, solidify him in the top 32 which means he'll get a favorable seed for Roland Garros uh, <laughs> the French Open so uh, when does the French Open start sometime in May that's what I thought like sometime yeah. This, yeah so um, you know just uh, every now and then you there's talent there's skill and every now and then you just need a little good luck all right that's how I got my first professional musical. Well, yeah. so somebody was on a touring show and his mother had cancer and decided that she was stopping treatment, treatment, unfortunately, which meant that she would only have a few days to live. And he said, I'm sorry, I can't go on the tour. And I got the call. Wow. Well. Yeah. You know, there's a, I think, um, uh, oh, I can't remember her name. There's, there's a, a lady on Broadway who's a very, very um, popular She's on the show called Younger, and I can't remember her name now. Um, but she was the understudy for something on like soon before opening night. Uh, the lead couldn't. She went on. She ended up winning a Tony. She's won another one since. <laughs> you know? mm. Sometimes, right? Preparation, perspiration, and a little bit of luck. So uh, that'll certainly boost the confidence, however, and uh, th that'll be good. So uh, congratulations to all of them. All right. More serious news. Um, I just want to touch on this because I don't want to stay on it long. Uh, post shenanigans, question period yesterday was extremely calm and respectful. Uh, PP was still asking uh, 
silly questions. Of course. Uh, for some reason, I do not understand why the federal government is not making the point uh, that they did not legalize drugs. Yeah, they're, they're not stepping up to the plate on that one. They should be. They didn't. Yeah. It was a provincial thing. Uh, no, but the actual truth is... They were decriminalized. 2.5, possession of 2.5 yes. grams was decriminalized. PP's in the House of Commons saying that the federal government legalized meth and legalized open consumption. That was never the case. Okay. When he's <clears> talking <throat> about the nurses with the breast milk, I finally, because he said it again yesterday, but it was formulated a little differently. I think he means nurses that work at the hospital who also happen to have been recent mothers <clears throat> who then go into a room that might have been had some meth like this. And they, but that's... Yeah, trying to apply the most generous. That's really generous. That's th that would. That's the only thing that would make sense. Uh, yeah. In that type of thing, um, the federal government did not legalize drugs. Did not legalize open use. The provincial government had a pilot program. Came to the federal government, said this: we need to do this to try this but it violates the law because we have a controlled substances act can health canada make an exception for this purpose in our right. province it, like this. It, and the federal government rather than standing in the way of the province who wanted to mm -hmm. experiment with something would try something this turned around and uh you know said yes we will do that if you think that that's what you guys need we will co we will be a cooperating partner so this is not at the initiative true of Trudeau, which he's also trying to make it the same. Yeah. There was one time in that whole session where he actually did say that it was coming from the provinces, but it kind of got slipped in. I think he maybe had a slip of the tongue and missed that because he actually spoke the truth there. I but, don't know what's going on with that. Um, but they're not the defending doubling this. down on this. I don't know. Yes. Well, it, and do you remember too when when this policy first came into play? We discussed. How some uh, individuals said, uh, "Okay, this is you're, you're moving in the right direction, but 2.5 grams is not enough." No, it's not enough in, in in the sense that somebody will have to go back to their dealer three or four times a day for somebody who has a severe problem, like yes. a, a, an addict. Will two and a half grams? That's not enough. And I know that sounds weird when I say it, but that was what uh, counselors if said. If you take the morality out of it, yes. Yes, if you put yourself in the shoes of an addict, mm -hmm. what are the odds that an addict only uses two point five grams of a drug a day? That was the that was the argument, right? They're saying, okay, you're moving in the right direction, but it's not enough, and here is why. So that means you know you're going to have addicts who, okay, now I'll get arrested for having two and a half grams, but that's not gonna that's not enough. Yeah, and then that yeah. what it means is that the flip side of that is that you multiply if you want to remain within the law. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you multiply your opportunities to come face to face. If you have to go see your drug or your dealer four times, that's four times mm -hmm. you can have an encounter with the law. Well, and here's another consideration too. Um, when it, when it comes to to this. After their first uh, high, their first fix, they might not <clears throat> exactly. throw their judgment is not necessarily great after that. So exactly. you know, and after the second fix, maybe less so, and maybe right. Like there's, so, there's it but was that's a step I mean. in the right direction, but it was it largely misguided. Hey, and I am not a policy expert. I'm not a policy wonk. I'm not a politician, a journalist, or an expert in that field. You're not. I'm an AV but, guy. That's my expertise. But here, but you still have the capacity to say, okay, let's do this. Let's game it out. Yes. What's likely to happen next, right? Conservatives, when they're making these appeals, open use on buses and in hospital rooms and nurses <sighs> breastfeeding their babies. That happens right now as it is yeah, anyway. But they're bypassing all of that, right? Mm -hmm. they're, by, they're clearly by anyway, nurses breastfeeding their babies. Open use is on buses next to children. Yeah. They're literally by they do not want you to think. They do not want you to put yourself in the shoes for of that addict, even for just one second, right? They want you to put they want they want you to be in the shoes of the concerned parent at home that's worried about their child on that bus. What was it Reese said yesterday? Right? Um, the conservatives will not treat people. They will throw them into 
cells, basically, and say they're being treated. They, they want to hide the problem from society, not treat it. Yeah, exactly. They're going to throw people in the garbage, is what they're doing. Yeah. So, for some reason, uh, Polyev couldn't accept yes for an answer. No. Because the question was, is he was trying to frame the question as if it was up to the prime minister to first make the decision so that the province could go ahead. Right. The province has determined that it wants to make some adjustments one year in to the program. It's not repealing the entire program, which is what it seems to be being also in the wording that Skippy is using. And even in the press, sometimes you get the impression that like, okay, the, it's like they're reversing themselves on the whole program. They're correcting. They're course correcting. Is more what they're doing, which is what you would expect in a pilot. You start it one year in, ooh, this isn't working like we intended or like we had hoped. We better make some changes here or there and help this come running smooth, right? That's the whole point of doing a pilot. Figuring out how what how this works in real life, or how we say in French, qu'est-ce que ça mange en hiver, right? So you got this pilot. They made an adjustment. They don't need. They're not asking for additional loosening of legal regulation. They're actually restricting certain things. So they don't even need. They don't even need to tell the federal government they're doing this. They they certainly don't need its permission. No. So Pierre's like sitting there like this, as if like this is like government led, and province somehow needs Trudeau to give him the okay. That David Eby doesn't need the prime minister's okay to make these adjustments, like at all. So, but um, if yesterday showed one thing is that uh, Pierre is actually quite able to do the thing in Parliament and in the House of Commons like a normal human. Cool. At least in terms of his demeanor, the questions are still as screwed up as they were. And it's not like the liberals didn't try to goad him. Mm. The liberals like put that like a knife in and twist it a little bit and try to goad him. And he remained disciplined. He remained super calm the whole time. And this was the question period on Wednesday where the Prime Minister stays for the whole thing. So PP got up often mm. to ask a lot of questions. Normally they ask like two, three, or four, and then they move on, and then you know it moves on to everybody else. Well, PP took almost all the questions for the conservatives that day in terms of asking them, and he remained disciplined and calm throughout. All. So, so he can mm. do it. He just chooses not to. He just chooses not to. Time. He, uh, he might have thought that this was a good move on his part to calm it down like this. And I'm guessing he did really calm it down because he probably got a lot of feedback that day. Because I have rarely, like, this man is disciplined, but I've never seen him remain disciplined to try and actually present a calm face. Right? I mean, we had that uh, First video of everything. The, the video of uh, MP Mark Miller. <laughs> do you have to have that one somewhere, Andy? Um, I do Where he's not talking know. about uh, PP being silenced. And going, he's in a scrum. He's going, silenced. Dude never shuts up. <laughs> it's like he was silencing him. <laughs> well, uh, well, I mean, it's true. Uh, it's absolutely true. It. <clears throat> oh, man. So, yeah, he's able to do it. He did do it. Uh, but, however, um, uh, behind the scenes, uh, once again, uh, conservatives are trying to convince us that they care about so much. Care so much about not doing racist things involving black people and faces. But they care so much about black people that they demanded the resignation of the black speaker because yes. the black speaker rightfully kicked out the leader of the opposition for saying the prime minister was wacko 
And after I thought it was four, but it was actually five chances. Yes. Yes. Including one where he said, I will give you one final chance to which he then to withdraw and petrally said, I withdraw and replace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've got the clip. Mark Miller. Please. Do you think what happened today is going to fuel the narrative that uh, he's being silenced by the liberals? Who's being silenced? Pierre. That guy's never shut his mouth in his life. I, who silences him? He, he keeps saying dumb things. It would be, I think it would be good if he shut up. He shut his yap once in a while. But the stuff that he does in the House of Commons is disgraceful. But he plays on that. He's a guy that likes to play outside the lines. When someone steps out the lines to, conf to confront him, uh, he freezes. Do you think what happened today is going to fuel the narrative that... Uh, that was like gold. Him. He's also this, that's Mark Miller, Minister of Immigration. He's also um, the guy who called uh, PP a serial bullshitter. Yeah, that was good. There's, he doesn't like him. <laughs> he doesn't like him at all. <laughs> oh. All right. That's sort of like the domestic stuff to put the final bow on that. Um, the big news is that uh, those campus protests that we mentioned um, were happening in the United States. Um, those are getting really, really um, They're getting nasty fast. Intense. Huh? Yeah, they're getting nasty yeah. fast. Uh, currently, this morning, uh, riot police are about to move in on the UCLA encampment because there were clashes yesterday. Uh, apparently, there was a sit-in. And uh, some people arrived with uh, sticks and started beating people there at the sit-in. Uh, there have been, uh, police have come in to um, take apart the encampment at Columbia University. Uh, there have been over 1,000 arrests since all of these things started. On well, US campuses. I have been told, and I don't know because I've not looked into it. I really haven't looked into it. There's been too much stuff going on and I've got other things I need to take care of. But I have been told that apparently at Columbia University, and correct me if I'm wrong, and again, I'm only going by what I've been told, the students have been doing some uh, vandalism to the school uh, that are encamped. Yes. Now, I've also heard that people have come to the encampment that are not even students. Yes, all of this is happening exactly. So okay. the, the protesters are vowing to remain in place in all these places until all their demands are being met. They're seeking for their academic institutions a commitment to divest from uh, Israel. Uh, it, I'm not sure it's exactly divest from Israel. For lack of a better term, divest from Israel. Not all protest groups have similarly formulated demands, with some of them listing specifically from which companies they would like their institutions to divest, while others have more general or broadly defined conditions. So there are protests on campuses in uh, Wisconsin, Arizona, in addition to Michigan, New York, and California. Um, at Columbia University, uh, what happened is that students had barricaded themselves inside Hamilton Hall, and they had been barricaded there since Tuesday morning. So police were called in to remove them. At least 300 were uh, arrested at Columbia and at the City College combined. The protest encampment was also dismantled. Flashbanks and a SWAT vehicle were used. And this was done at the, press, uh, the request of the president of the university. Um, the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, said that police intelligence had indicated the, the presence of external actors with a history of escalating situations who are not part of the student body. Uh, there are about 30 colleges and universities in the United States that are the sites of such protests or encampments at the moment. There were 34 arrests at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. There's stuff going on at the University of Milwaukee. Uh, Al Jazeera reported uh, that, uh, that um, like I mentioned, there was a solidarity sit-in at UCLA. Uh, students were beaten with sticks at the encampment. Uh, the UCLA canceled classes the next day. And uh, like I said, now there's a uh, riot police. Uh, if they're not doing it now, uh, and getting ready uh, to take some action over there at UCLA. In Canada, uh, there are now uh, such uh, movements at five universities now, the latest being at uh, the University of Toronto. 
seems to have started to, over the last uh, few, uh, last 24 to 48 hours, I see. Uh, there are some at UBC and at McGill. Uh, the other two universities were not listed in the reports that I, uh, that I read so far. Um, this could be, ooh, that's the morning pour. There you go. Um, this could be interesting politically um, for the parties to navigate because the instinct oh, yeah. is going to be for the conservatives to want to uh, call for law and order and clamping down and you know send back those foreign students and you know who are not here to study and here to cause whatever and all the other tropes that they can use. Um, but strategically, uh, conservatives are currently doing very well with that demographic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, strategically, uh, if these protests and encampments on Canadian campuses start to multiply, the conservatives are going to be in a position of, do they choose to remain all in on Israel? or on the Netanyahu government, I should say, probably more than Israel, all in on supporting the Netanyahu government, as they have been, and um, risk alienating the base that they've worked so hard to recruit by complaining about housing and living in people's basements pretty much every day for the last two years. Because... Um, on this, the students that are more idealistic and militant, uh, it doesn't take much of a signal for them to drop you like a hot potato. Oh, goodness, on, no. On this particular file. No, no. So it's going to be interesting to watch PP try Just to say handle. heads must roll and call them the cops without trying to actually say heads must roll and call them the cops because he doesn't want to use, lose the youth vote. Because mm. right now, Currently, polls are indicating that he's got that uh, not locked up, but uh, he's definitely uh, eaten the prime minister's lunch. Well, <clears throat> for how so, long? Yeah, just say, well, pay attention to, uh, again, when he's going to be talking about student encampments, at what it is that he is, if he goes this route, what it is he is trying not to say. Because uh, he just like presented himself two, three days ago in front of the Canadian uh, police chiefs of police, the Canadian Association of Police or whatever, as uh, being um, the law and order guy, right? That he's so much so that I'll, I'll, I'll be able to, if you know what I mean, uh, with the notwithstanding yeah. clause in order to make sure that, uh, you know, it's bail, not jail, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, by the way, um, speaking of bail, not jail, it was uh, somebody uh, mentioned online, I saw that, uh, um, that Pierre Padiev better be careful what he hopes for there because if that his policy that he would like to be in place were in place actually now um tamara and chris yeah, we and pointed that out yesterday yeah, yeah yeah would still be in there so they'd all be in jail yeah so you know it's funny how that double-edged sword comes to cut from both sides mm -hmm. <laughs> so let, let, let's discuss something here for a second so the students are up in arms about the war in in uh, Gaza, right? Yep. And I understand that. And yep. I read something the other day saying um, that that was supposed to pull at my heartstrings and, and make me sympathize with Gen Z. And to a degree, the millennials are like, all we've known is war our whole lives. You know, we were born, there was this war, that war, there's another war, there's the Ukraine, there's the... I'm like, uh-huh. Hi, Gen X over here, you know, the forgotten generation. I was born during the Vietnam War. That went on for the first seven years of my life. Then we had the Gulf War. Then we had the Iraq War, the Afghanistan War, the war in Ukraine, Bosnia. the Gaza War, Bosnia. It just goes on and on and on and on. I do sympathize with you, but hi, I've known more than you have. I've known more war than you have. I have friends who have fought in some of those wars and have come back with permanent emotional scars. So I'm not diminishing, diminishing what you're going through, but you're not the only one going through it. Or at least not the first. Not the first. So just open up your eyes to the bigger picture. That's all I'm asking of you. That's it. You're not the only one who's suffering through this. 
They're like, well, we were born in recession. Hello? <laughs> like, you're not the only one. I mean, I'm starting to think of them like the occupiers from the Freedom Convoy. They think they're the only ones affected by this. No. No. We all are. We're all in it together, whether you like it or not. So show some compassion. Show some empathy. Stop breaking shit. There are better ways to do this. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, I see it a little differently. I, I, um, there was the idealism. Yeah, I get of it. youth. Uh, there's a factor there. I mean, you know, a lot of. Uh, I remember when I was at university, I was going to change the world. Right? Of course. Um, I mean, I still think I'm going to change the world, but not in the same way I thought when I was 20. <laughs> right? Um, I also, for me, I'm looking at the these younger generations. I have a t I have a taste of it because I was still young enough, right when the whole internet thing and starting getting globally connected, but they've never known a reality in which they were not globally connected, and there's. I think that the combination of distance from World War Two, right, we could have had. Parents who fought. Yes. Mm -hmm. Directly. This generation, not. Right? So distance from World War II, plus a combination of, because you're more globally connected, it's like, we, we now live in a world today where a 16-year-old in Sarnia can have more in common with a fellow 16-year-old in Kyoto. Mm -hmm. because, because they both love anime and, and play yes. Minecraft. Yes. Right. Then they have, you know, with the guy who's playing street hockey, two, two, two doors down. Yeah. Right. So when you, it's almost the same thing as we have with journalists. When I say, you know, journalists, it's not that they're particularly more left. It's just that because they deal with all types of different humans. So they see all different types of humans, and all different, different types of human stories. And after a while, you know that the world is not just black and white, that the easy solutions themselves are not going to do it because you can't help it. Mm -hmm. You've mingled with too many different types of people with too many different types of stories to know that it's one size fit all, or that all these people are all like this. You just, I guess I'm just feeling frustrated today, you know? Yeah. So with kids and the younger generations, because you know people from all types of different, you're more likely now more than at any point in your life to have a circle of friends and of acquaintances that are from all types of different cultures and different religions, mm -hmm. different beliefs. And it's, it's that innate sense of justice, just like, you know, when you ask the kids about, the bullying of their trans friends, right? When you're watching all these conservatives doing that, it's like they're literally killing their vote base for the next 30, 40 years. All these 12, 13, 14, 15 year olds in school right now who have trans friends, who have somebody that's non-binary in their circle, I guess they're watching this happening right now. Like this, that shapes you for life. That shapes your vote for the next 20, 30 years mm -hmm. at that age, right? You did this to my friends. And I couldn't do anything about it when I was 15. I couldn't do anything about it when I was 16, but now I'm 20. Don't get me wrong, folks. I'm, I'm not shitting on the students. You know I love Gen Z and think they're going to save us because they're not putting up with the crap that we put up with. But there's also a life experience thing. That's the thing, right? They're, they're not going to put up with the garbage that we put up with. They're just not accepting it, period. And I, I, I salute you kids, man, because, damn it, we, we were just told to shut up, put up, and take it. And your boss will recognize the good job you did and promote you. Yeah. Yeah. That's, no. It didn't happen. You want to get a promotion, you got to toot your own horn. You got to tell people the good job you did. And that flies in the face of everything I've ever known was taught and believed. But that's the simple matter of, of how things are today. Especially as a Canadian. Oh, my God. 
Jeez. If you if you don't promote yourself in your workplace, you're not going anywhere. You're not. You're not. It's as simple as that. It's it's just frustrating, you know. I, I, look, I, I I will never stop loving Gen Z because the, I'd say the vast majority of them are on the side of goodness in this world, on the side of community, on the su- side of supporting one another. Because they're like, no, we've seen what it did to our parents and their parents, and we're not having it. You want me, like, nobody wants to work anymore. No, that's not true. People want to work. Mm-hmm. They just want to work for a livable wage at a, at a bare minimum, which is what the minimum and, wage was always supposed to be. And a reasonable amount to still have a life. Yes, not work 90 hours a week. They want to be able to have a life. That's not too much to ask, is it? Again, they've seen their parents not have one. Exactly. And they're like, no, that ain't for me. <laughs> like, I have so much faith in the future. I really do. I really do. But some days I get frustrated. I get frustrated when I see them being misguided and there's nobody that's that's trying to talk sense to them. Dan said earlier they're they're being led around by thirty year olds who know that they can lead them around. That's and nice. that's the sad part. It's like where's the leaders amongst them who are going like, hold on a second here, we can protest this war, but destroying property that we paid to, to be here for, and we're going to have to pay to fix. Yeah, that's really not. That's cutting off your own nose to spite your face, and that's just stupidity. Yeah. I think Ms. Shadika here has a, has a great point here. It's to also a reminder that the kids today are scared for the future. Jazzy's constantly dreading living out in the real world. She feels doomed. I think most of them do. Yeah. So yeah. climate alone. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so, and we also have to understand that with this particular issue, since people are talking or using words such as genocide, mm-hmm. I mean, I do not know how you, pro- if you believe that you are protesting against a genocide that is, you believe is happening right now. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure in what reality one can reasonably expect that that type of protest for that type of special specific cause is going to remain calm and dispassionate. Well, speaking, if your motivation is people are dying now and being exterminated, it's kind of counterintuitive with a sign going, I am mildly upset and I will, you know, (laughs) um, well, and then you add all the history. Here, here's the younger generation. This is uh, from Karima. This clip, it's uh, about 55 seconds, and it's, I'm not going to explain anything. We'll just watch it, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Intefada. <laughs> It they fought until victory, one solution, revolution. Whose streets? Our streets, Oakville streets. Are you part of the organization? Um, would you like to take a pamphlet or a paper? No, I, I know. I'm oh, speaking. no way. That's awesome. I'm yeah. speaking and I think uh, we in one of your rallies. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, not rallies, uh, before the mayor. Yeah. Oh, that's really cool. I'm Tristan. Stella. What's your name, sorry? Amir. Amir, nice to meet you. Yeah. Now, again, this for me is like the vape thing we talked about the other day. Mm-hmm. I don't get it. I don't understand it. But there is a Communist Party of Canada that is registered with Elections Canada. It's table. Mm-hmm. It's literature. It's inflammatory, but it doesn't seem to be crossing any hate speech lines. And it's not violent. That was the 28th of April. 
in uh, in Oakville, um, one of the richest GTA suburbs, during a rally in the town square. It's like Thanks, Saucy, for sending that to me. They're defending their opinion and promoting. They're it. not doing anything wrong or illegal. So I just, I, I just don't get it. Uh, for people who are listening at home, uh, it was um, in Oakville. I'm, de- I'm deducting, I'm deducing, um, and it was basically uh, on a street. Uh, there's a table, uh, and there was a whole bunch of uh, paraphernalia for uh, the Communist Party and communist uh, uh, literature, uh, pro-communist literature, uh, and young students, uh, mostly dressed uh, in black. Uh, uh, well, two students at the table who were interacting with two or three people at the table where we're looking over the material and just chatting and, and being, you know, the guy saying our streets was as boisterous as it got. Mm-hmm. So, now, l- l- let's remember, <laughs> there's been a Communist Party of Canada for decades. Oh, yeah. All my life. Yeah, you can vote for them if you want. They're there. They're there. Yeah. There was a rhinoceros party once. Yeah, there's a Marxist-Leninist party. There's, yeah. I mean, they're, they're like, I don't know how many parties there are, but there are a lot of them. No, Trent, we're, we're not, we're not approving of any of this. We're not approving of any of this. We're just tactics talking about it. Tactics within the law, within the law. Not See, approving. The, is they, the, the, the Diagonal folks have called for, um, some pretty serious crimes to be committed on their behalf. Yeah. We, we don't need to go into the, the there is a distinct difference mm-hmm. between what provocateur groups right. are doing and people who have fringe political opinions, but who still promote them or campaign or do their politics within the boundaries of the sandbox. Right? There's a Christian heritage party. There are parties that are religious based. There's parties mm-hmm. that are, you know, uh, other political philosophies and ideologies and doctrines there are, there are you know there's the pastafarians there's the rhinoceros party there you know there are protest parties there are again you're allowed to believe whatever you believe you are allowed to work in furtherance of your beliefs so long as it is within the law and respects the constitution it's like there is nothing about being fringe that is inherently wrong mm-hmm. You're allowed to hold a curious or an odd position or a position that would seem odd to the wide majority and advocate and fight for it. There's nothing wrong with that. So long as you do it within the law, you're going to have to deal with people who look at you and go, why are you guys being weird? But then again, I mean, you probably look at us and say, why, why, why are we being weird? Mm-hmm. Why don't we just, why don't we not get it? But that is all part of the healthy parry and thrust of politics. Mm-hmm. You can have a very unpopular opinion, but so long as you defend it and push it and promote it and talk about it within the bounds of the law, you're good. Yeah, you're, you're allowed to. There's nothing wrong with having an unpopular, an unpopular opinion. It's like separatists in Quebec. You're, you're allowed to have an unpopular opinion, but when you call for the um, execution of politicians, you've crossed the line. Yeah. When, but I mean, you, when you ask uh, that somebody's wife be on the receiving end of um, assault of a sexual nature, you've crossed a line. And we know who we're talking about here. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid getting censored by, by YouTube by choosing yeah. very specific words and speaking but, but, in circles. But the point we need to remember here is that particularly in Canada, this is not new to us. We have separatists. Mm -hmm. That's a really unpopular opinion. Yes. For some people, right? Literally taking a province out of the country, just, you know, separating our country, dividing our country, literally making our country different than what it actually is. On one way, removing all of the French fact historic from our country. Trent, um, everything right Trent, i just want to address this one comment here he said that was a joke made on a private live stream at 3 a.m it's a public forum when it's on youtube it's not private when it's on youtube when it's on the internet it is not private it's public he said it in the public domain i don't care if it was at 3 a.m or if he meant that as a joke you don't joke about sexually assaulting somebody else's wife 
that's not funny ever. Okay. I'm not angry with you. I just, we just got to qualify this. It's not private when it's on the internet. The internet is a public forum and you have no uh, expectation of privacy in a public forum, period. They used there to put it crudely, it used to be the law that a threesome, a threesome mm-hmm. in the privacy of your own bedroom was a public sex act. Correct. Because there's two people have sex and another person there. So if a threesome was once a public sex act, even though it was in the privacy of your own bedroom, trust me. <laughs> On this one, it's like, this was not a private forum. No. I get it was on Telegram, a Telegram channel, because what? It's in the public forum. It's in the public sphere now. Yeah. doesn't matter if you had a private conversation with somebody. Once it gets released to the public, it's in the public sphere. So yeah. you've crossed the line. Yeah. But and that's, you, it. that's it, Tavi, right there. Don't joke about sexual assault with anyone. It's yeah. not funny. Yeah. It's not a joking matter. I mean, we recently saw that there was that meme with the Boston Yeah, we're not here to discuss yeah. that. Boston Bruins and yeah, so like, yeah, we, we just don't joke about that. We don't joke about that. Exactly. Um, but you have this, yeah, anyway, uh, I don't, I, I, I don't want to give this more time. No, no. Which is that in Canada, we need to move like on. this. We are. Of all the countries I know of, this we actually have a separatist element. And we have decided, you know what? This is a legitimate legitimate political point of view, even though most of us don't share it. Mm-hmm. So long as you defend it within the bounds of the law. We've even had two referendum. Mm-hmm. There are other countries that have separatist movements, but they have been, well, let's, I mean, we don't have to cite the list of them, but violent uprisings, yeah. radicalization. And we're not having that in this country. There are people we, out West who want to wax it. And I'm like, well, knock yourself out. You're all in treaty territory. Where are you going? But we were going to start that way too, right? We had the FLQ and then mm-hmm. you know, Trudeau and father put it in. Put, shut uh, that nip, down quickly. Nip that in the bud. A lot of people are very upset about that still. But, right, we took a different turn. It's like this. In Canada, it is not a new concept at all that unpopular political opinion can play in the sandbox so long as they play by the rules. Mm-hmm. This is not a this is not a concept that's foreign at all to us. So, but what you mentioned, Mr. Grizzly, about older people mm-hmm. coming in and saying, "Hey, we know these tactics and whatnot that are really effective or whatnot," or "Yeah, we believe in your cause," or coming in to co-opt or or say, "Oh, look at that! The kids are organizing an encampment." Mm-hmm. Let's show up with goggles and masks, and that's what happened at UCLA. Yeah, UCLA. They tried to disperse them. They told people to go home, and not only did people not go home, but about a thousand more showed up with goggles and masks, and mm-hmm. and now the riot police is there. You know, we are. We are in an era of what's called the permanent protester. Yes. There are people who make their living doing it, who make their living doing this. They record themselves, they develop a following, they have people donate. Eventually they're able to live off this and they go from place to place this, and they protest. And if you've ever watched the, the movies scream the series mm-hmm. well the longer the series goes well you know, the kills have to be more spectacular oh yes and bloody and gory so these people keep on thinking okay well now i've got some i have some validation people are cheering me on whatnot like this i gotta give the people what they're asking for I've gotta put on a little more I've gotta put on a good show well and yes. This is an industry. The suggestion from people that, oh, well, you know, um, Diagalon is a joke. It was meant as a joke. I'm like, okay, I can accept that statement. Yeah, it was meant as a joke, a gag. But the problem is there are people who are true believers in it. Now. That, yes. Because, and again, how and those are the people off. I'm worried about. 
kind that, of like how that uh, the the guy who um what was it who was who uh, assaulted uh, in Quebec, uh, he cited what Alex Jones along with Tucker Carlson. Yeah, it, it, ideas incite people, even if it's a joke. It can incite people, and when you incite people to do bad things, they want a white. They want a, the, the the idea behind diagonal. For those of you who do not know, is to have a white nation that stretches from Alaska to Florida at a diagonal line, taking up all these states. They're going to go in. That that's the idea behind it. A white ethno state. Yeah, that's the idea behind it. So clearly, one can see how that could be a start off as a joke. Is it yes. just so out there? It's out, out, outrageously ridiculous. It's like, oh, yeah, so you're going to go through Texas and you're going to tell people how to live in Texas where everybody owns a gun? <laughs> and, then, and then when you get to Florida, good luck. <laughs> so, I mean, I can see how that started out as a joke. Sure. It's such a ridiculous notion. But there will be people who will fall for it and believe in it, who want an ethno state, a white They've ethno state. They've got people to eat Tide Pods. Yeah. Yeah. There's literally a market for everything. Yeah. No matter how dumb the idea. But the problem is, it's like that it started out as a joke. It was like how things started out and how they ended up is re- irrelevant. That's like when the Republicans in the states say, but but the the Republicans are the party of Lincoln. Okay, great. When Lincoln freed the slaves, but what have you done for me lately? The Democrats were originally the pro-slavery party. Okay, yeah. But uh, over the course of my lifetime, <laughs> you know, so, right? Whether it started out as a joke or not is relevant. It's what it is now that matters. And right now it's no joke. It just isn't. Um, you know, so, yeah. We should not be losing our minds because people have fringe or unpopular opinions and want to further them or want to try to persuade other people that their ideas are the better ones. That's healthy democracy. Yes. And it's what you do in furtherance of your beliefs. Mm-hmm. Do you do that? Do you do and say things? Do you make choices that are within the bounds of the law? If you don't, you are persecuted or prosecuted for what you do, for choices you made, not what you believe. A lot of, because, and it, listen, it's very easy, again, in this victim culture state, like this, in this PR war, like this, you frame yourself as the victim, and you play fast and lose. So, right, when somebody says, stop behaving like a child, you called me childish. No, I didn't say you were childish. I said your behavior is that of a child. I'm criticizing your behavior, mm-hmm. not you, the person. Well, I heard you criticizing me. Well, you can hear that all you want, and that's what you can run with. But I clearly chose my words very carefully to criticize your behavior. If you can't understand that, that's on you, not me. Maybe it's not in your interest to understand that. Maybe you need to tell yourself that I criticized you or attacked you personally, because that's what you need to get back. Mm -hmm. But I criticized your behavior. So... There's these types of difference. People will pay fast, fast, fast and loose with words. They'll conflate things. They'll, of course. Right? They'll cut corners on the story. So choose your words carefully to make sure that you're saying what it is you actually want to say, mm-hmm. that your critique applies to the things that you actually do want to critique. Yes. But for the rest of it, of matters of personal taste, mm-hmm. There's no point in debate. Well, that's the old exchange and sharing. Mm -hmm. I like this. I like this. But there's like, you like tea. You like coffee. I like hot chocolate. I don't understand how anything that smells as good as coffee can taste so bad. (laughs) Like this. Let's say you are lactose intolerant. Mm -hmm. Hot chocolate is not for you. Like this. I am never going to convince you that hot chocolate is better every time you have hot chocolate. Unless like bad let's say milk, why not like bad things happen? And you're not gonna it doesn't matter how many times I put coffee in my mouth, it's still tasty. <laughs> so I'll take this. But, but it hey, does smell so damn good, doesn't yeah, it? Right. <laughs> you love coffee, that makes you happy. I'm happy for you. I exactly. love chocolate, you're happy for me. 
because we're not harming anybody. No. <laughs> right? Well, and, and remember that the, the saying that the customer is always right in matters of taste. Yes. They always chop off the end of that. The customer is always right in matters of taste. Yes. There's a problem in French. De goût et de couleur, on ne discute pas. Of tastes and color, we do not discuss. We simply share. That's it. That's it. I don't need to be right that green is a nicer color than red. It's true for me, and that's mm -hmm. good enough. And now you know this about me. Right? <laughs> that's all it is. That's all it is, right? So, yes, Trent, that is exactly right. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm sure there's someone in the group that don't feel the same as I do, but you get a big enough group of people and you'll find one or two bad apples. Yep. It, period. I guess period. everybody is there for their own motive and reason, right? Because And nobody there can know everybody's motive and reason. But when you're at these types of events and you see somebody fucking up, mm -hmm. I guess it's like, call it out. Hey, buddy, you're fucking up. You're making the rest of us look bad. Please don't do that here. We don't want that. You can say that. Mm -hmm. right? No, no, it, it, this is not this type of protest. Yeah, we're not, we're not, we're not here to do that. We actually believe in the cause. Mm -hmm. The convoy lost all credibility the moment they brought out uh, the Gadsden flag and Nazi flags and fuck Trudeau flags. They lost all credibility and that happened on day one. Yeah, but it wasn't the and moment. And rebel flags. Yeah, but it wasn't the moment they brought it in. It was the moment they appeared. And nobody stopped and they them didn't them out. know better to tell them to leave. They didn't know mm -hmm. better than to run to a mic and publicly denounce. They didn't. Yeah, they just let it go. Well, we can't control everybody. You, it's your protest. Kick them out. If you don't want them, to, if you don't want to be identified with them, kick them to the curb. And that's what we keep on saying about the conservatives, right? It's like, if you do not want to be associated with the pro-life movement, I'm like, this, and then those people that keep on trying to introduce those private members' bills, don't mm -hmm. let the bills go through and tell them they're not welcome. That's what the prime minister did. Mm -hmm. He said, whatever you believe in your own personal life, that's up to you. I'm not here to police your beliefs, but as an elected representative and member of this party, you are going to stand for choice. Period. Right? It's not hockey players, hockey teams trade their own players. <laughs> there are some people you have to decide you don't want on your team. Pretty straightforward, right? Even if they show up wearing your team jersey. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Listen, you're wearing the right clothes and whatnot like this, but clearly you're not on this team. Sorry. You have to control your own groups. Like, I know that there's no specific leadership in this movement or whatnot, like this, but if you care about the cause mm -hmm. more than anything else, when you see people that are not, that are there for other motives than the cause or there to stir up or agitate, you close ranks. You close ranks. It's up to movements. So if you don't want to get the bad reputation, the monitoring has to happen from within. Mm. Yes. And, for example, yes, it's easy. A common go-to, as I see in the comment, is that somebody here was a plant, somewhere was a flag. It is more likely that a professional protester that is looking or perpetual professional protester who's mm -hmm. looking to up their own visibility to get more likes, more clicks, more fame, more attention, more donations, more support. It's coming in. Tour. Yeah, coming in to pull your message to the wrong way. Then somebody will make the effort to go into a group of people that they know are hostile to them, mm -hmm. I guess, and pretend to be something they're not as a plant. The plant saying, oh, well, it's just a plant is the easy way to dismiss it as not real and not to have to take a look inside first. Always first look inside your group. If there's a piece of criticism, always first look inside. 
Is it true? No. Okay. Are we doing something that can make it so that people might see it that way? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Is there anything else that we can do instead of that that could be just as effective that wouldn't give that impression? Yes. Let's make that adjustment. And if after that it's still no, then it might be the other person or the other group. But always first look inward. Mm -hmm. Then outward. It's easy to say it's a plant, to just not have to deal with it or not have to take the uncomfortable look. Take the uncomfortable look. Sometimes it saves your movement. Right? There's a difference between advocacy and activism. Speaking of movement. Uh, go. <laughs> you got to go. All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love to make it. We love making this for you. We love to make it for you, too. I, I guess I could have gone to the wire with that one. Remember, sharing is caring and uh, word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps and poops all about us because, uh, well, we want more people. We, we, we want more friends here at the Beaver Watch. If you would like to make sure that you do not miss an episode, well, then uh, scan that QR code that's right beneath my chin. Uh, thanks to the lovely Ray girl. That will bring you to our pod page podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and um if you click subscribe there well you know what will happen we will come directly to you every single time we have something fresh off the bandwidth and if you'd like to support us in other ways then please go to the true north eager beaver media incorporated youtube page and click our buttons like share subscribe we have three of them click one click two click three it makes us happy click in the public let your freak flex fly. Woo and if you'd like to support us in yet another way, the QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head here brings you to the Eager Beaver Lodge Emergency Hydration Fund, where coffee, hot chocolate, Caesar, and Guinness are waiting there to help us write, market, produce, and deliver this show that we hope you love and enjoy to you every single day. So if you click that, then you have a couple of loonies in your pocket and you would like to help us make rent or pay our internet fees or all that good stuff, well then... We would very much appreciate that. And if you're listening, you go to coffee, that's ko-fi.com, slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word, and there you will find our tip jar, and we thank you for any contribution that you can make. Because democracy is something that you do. If you live in Alberta, please get involved in the NDP leadership race. You've got your favorite candidate, go knock on doors, phone bank, all that good stuff. This is the time to get involved. This is where it matters, so uh, please roll up your sleeves. and. Mr. Grizzly, because it could be a tough world out there. Be kind too and gentle with yourself. And please, words of wisdom. You can only control what you can control. And what does that mean? I know it sounds cryptic, but you can only control how you behave and how you act and react to situations that you find yourself in. Sometimes we lose the ability to control ourselves. Sometimes we fly off the handle. Sometimes we go into panic mode. It's human. It's okay. You're allowed to do that. But try and reflect. Try and look inward and, and think to yourself, how should I react to this situation that I find myself in all of a sudden? I know that's difficult to do, especially when the situation is happening. And it depends on what the situation is, of course. It varies. But always try and find yourself grounded, centered, and behaving in a manner that you can be proud of and tell your mom about. I haven't always done that. But I'm striving to do it more and more every day, and I'm getting better at it all the time. Practice makes better. It does not make perfect. I don't want perfection. Perfection is boring as hell. I want to be better. I will work at it every day for the rest of my life. And I hope you can too. Yep. And, you know, even if you can't think of it in the moment, if you think about it after, reflect through it, I guess, then you are equipped for the next time that moment arrives. Because, this ah, is, I've been here before, and now I know what to do. Exactly. It's never exactly too late. Correct. Yeah. That's it's never exactly too late. What it is. Even if you're not successful in the moment, as Mr. Grizzly has taught me. Not that you failed, that you weren't successful in the moment. That's it. Doesn't mean you can't be successful in the next one. Exactly. All right. Exactly. All right, Mr. Grizzly. Cue that cock. 
You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and the Peppermaster. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph Something for our opening and closing sequence music. Before we go, I just want to say I saw this uh, this um, something from Kit Trent there going. I appreciate you not banning me. Good talk. No worries, my bud. No you, worries you, at all. You've been polite and respectful. We won't ban you if you, you come in here. You're polite and respectful. Nobody gets banned. Polite, respectful, non-aggressive. If you have a fringe view, that's fine. That's fine. Just yeah. present it as in this is what I believe, and we're good. Simply and no more that, and we'll be good with that. This is how all we right? have the conversation, right? You're welcome here. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. We're not aggressive. No. Don't worry about it. No. All right. I have one quick thing I want to share because I'm like, um, yikes. This is, um, shall we say the plot thickens? Nothing to do with that, but anything we've been talking about today. This has to do with a certain uh, company that manufactures planes. Josh Ooh. Twardine, a former quality auditor at Boeing supplier Spirit Aerosystems and one of the first whistleblowers to allege Spirit leadership had ignored manufacturing defects on the 737 MAX, died after a struggle with a sudden, fast-spreading infection. Uh, Dean was represented by a law firm in South Carolina that also represented Boeing whistleblower John Mitch Barnett. Barnett was found dead in an apparent suicide in March. He was in the midst of giving mm. depositions alleging Boeing re- retaliated against him for complaints about quality lapses. We're not saying a damn thing, but yeesh. if you work for or worked for that airline, stay away from windows on higher floors. That's all we're saying. Yeah, we're, yes. we're, we're getting into some cloak and dagger stuff here, right? Jeez, it's like movie stuff. Yeah, exactly. All right, I got to go. I got to get to the office. I will see you later. All right. Have a beautiful day, everyone.